What's good? What's good? We're back. Triple P, Paul Pickett Podcast. We got my uh, co-star today, my puppy Gia. I guess she's going to join in. And, uh, of course, we got the new litter apparel. Check us out, you know. We got the face mask and all, you know, new litter apparel. Check us out, newletter.com. Um, hit that subscribe button if you're on YouTube. You know, hit that follow on um, Twitter, Facebook, wherever else you're on. Hit that like. Um, my name is Paul Pickett. This is the Paul Pickett Podcast, Triple P. We talk nothing but NBA and NFL. Took a little week off, but I'm back. Got my Coca-Cola. I don't drink coffee, so, you know, I drink my Coca-Cola in a coffee cup. That's my morning cup of, you know, Joe, as they would say. All right, we're going to get into, uh, you know, some NFL first. Um, let's go over a couple of these little headlines and uh, just give you my opinion on it. Um, we got Deshaun Watts. My bad. Deshaun Jackson to the Rams. I don't know, like, the Rams, I mean... Yeah, they got they made some, you know they made some moves. They got they got Stafford now. You know they upgraded. You know the quarterback. I don't know Deshaun Jackson's going to help too much. He's always um hurt. He's injured a lot. Uh, we got Galladay four years, seventy two million to the Giants. Um, Giants have made some moves. Um, I don't know that anybody in the NFC least has really got significantly a lot better. Giants need Saquon Barkley back. They need to see what that quarterback really could be. And, you know, I feel like they overpaid for a receiver that that they're not really going to get over the hump. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to win the Super Bowl four years, 72 million to a receiver. Um, What else we got? We got Mitchell Trubisky to the Bills in one year. Mitchell Trubisky had the option to go to the um, the Denver Broncos and be a starter, but he didn't. Um, he chose to go to the Bills. Um, Broncos are a mess, anyways. I they get Mitchell Trubisky. I mean, it's not really <laughs> doesn't move the needle, and he actually goes and you know becomes a backup on a winning team for a year. And maybe he could get a starting position next year. Uh, we got Emmanuel Sanders, one year to the Washington football team. Apparently, they're going to stay with that name, the Washington football team, which is crazy. I mean, it, <laughs> I don't get it, but um, oh, well. Kobe Brissett to the Dolphins, one year, $5 million. Um, I mean, you know. It doesn't really move the needle for me. Juju back to the Steelers. Um, he chose he his options were the Ravens and the Steelers, if I'm not mistaken. And a lot of receivers ain't really going to the Ravens because the Ravens are run first, run first, run first. You know, team and their quarterback Lamar Jackson. You know, even though he's he's explosive on the run and whatnot, he's yet to prove himself. As a passer, we got Tyrod Taylor to Houston. Um, I mean, because we don't know what's going to happen to Deshaun Watson, which I'm about to get into in a minute. And uh, we got Dalton to the Bears. I mean, like, whoopee do. 1985, all I knew was the Bears. The Bears, 85 Bears. That's all I knew, 1985. Six years old. You know, a little six-year-old kid riding little Papa Smurf three-wheelers, wearing Duke, Dukes of Hazard t-shirts with a with a messed-up cut. You know, with the with the seventies, you know, cut that was terrible. But that's all I knew was the Bears, and I'm forty-two now. I'm about to be forty-two this Friday, and <laughs> one thing I've noticed. About the Bears is they've never had a legit quarterback. I mean, they got Donovan McNabb late in his career, and he's probably the best quarterback they ever had wear a Bears jersey. But he was past his prime, you know. Like they've never had a legit 
legit quarterback at the Bears since I've been living, man. I mean, I'm probably going to die and they'll never have a legit quarterback at the Bears. Uh, Fitzpatrick to the Washington football team, as they call themselves, the Washington football team. Um, yeah, it doesn't move the needle for me. AJ Green to the Cardinals. I mean, what AJ Green are we talking about here? Like, is it going to be a healthy, you know, three years ago, AJ Green? Or last two years, and excuse me for that, Burke. Um, Deshaun Watson. I mean, I think he's up to like 20 something lawsuits, man. I, I'm going to put down the paper on this one. I got to talk on this one for a second. Let me get a sip of my Coca Cola. Hit that subscribe button in the right hand corner if you're on YouTube. Don't forget, check us out the audio version on Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, uh, Slacker, iHeartRadio, and you can Google Paul Pickett Podcast. Also, it's going to be on Facebook, Instagram TV, and a lot of other platforms. Deshaun Watson, man, like, I don't know that I believe all this, man. Like, not let me rephrase that. I don't believe all these women. I don't think I believe any of these women. Because it's always a pattern of, like, nobody ever comes out once it happens. It's always got to be, oh, to the first strong woman comes out. The first one that's strong enough to come out and speak up on it gives the rest strength. I mean, so damn. So it's always just a bunch, bunch of just weak-minded women that are being targeted for these things? No, man. Like, get out of here with that. It always just be one chick comes out and then everybody wants to start coming out so like the first one might like this is how I look at it even if the first one what was telling the truth normally like about half of these or uh, uh, majority of these aren't they're just telling lies to try to get rich off of a guy who has a Hundred and seventy million dollar contract, or I'm not mistaken, hundred sixty million dollar contract. You know, like this wouldn't be happening if it was a regular Joe. You know, that worked a regular nine to five. It wouldn't be twenty one women coming out trying to sue him. And none of these women have filed criminal charges. They're all trying to sue, get rich. I don't believe. You know, I don't know that I believe any one of these, man. I, I believe most of these are probably just. Escorts trying to say now that it wasn't consensual. You know. That that's my take on it. It's escorts trying to say it wasn't consensual, you know, because all of this is supposed to be like massages with happy endings. You know, like he wanted happy endings or tried to make them give him a happy ending. Like if anything I know about the massage world, there's a lot of happy endings going on in massage worlds. You know, a lot of happy endings going on in massage worlds. It's been going on since before America. Escorting, things of that nature have been going on before America was even thought of. You know what I'm saying? It's, I mean, like, people, you know, been escorting since the beginning of the time. You could call it hookering, whatever you want to call it, prostitution, escorting. It's been going on since the beginning of time, man. And, you know, if an escort gets paid and it wants to scream sexual assault, man, I mean, come on, man. You know, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't get to work that way. So, you know, I might take slack for, for what I'm saying on this one. If anybody's watching. But that's just how I feel about it. I don't believe none of it. I believe it's all bogus. I believe it's a lot of people trying to get rich. That's all I believe. And it's just very convenient of the timing. You know, like, he wants out. Houston says we're not going to trade him. It's very convenient of the timing. You know, but uh, let me get to the NBA now. Uh, we got P.J. Tucker to the Bucks. It seems like the Bucks are going in all in on defense to win. They're going in on all in on defense to win. I mean, because P.J. Tucker doesn't move the needle on the offensive end, but he moves the needle on the defensive end. I mean, now you got a, a defense of P.J. Tucker, Giannis, Middleton, 
and Drew Holiday and Brooke Lopez out there, that's going to be tough to score on, man. That's going to be very tough to score on, you know. For the Bucks, I think it really fits their culture because he, he's a, you know, he's a 3 and D guy. He's a 3 and D guy. Uh, we got a reason to the heat. Um, along with, actually, they got um, my man Victor Oladipo. So, Victor Oladipo and Ariza went to the Heat. Um, I think that makes up for what they lost in um, Crowd, Jay Crowder and um, Derek Jones. Like that, because Trevor Reza is, uh, is he's not athletic as Derek Jones Jr., but he's he's long and, and thin like him. And Victor Oladipo, I, not that he totally replaces what Crowder did, but he can on the scoring and, and play defense hard. Um, I want to talk about the Atlanta Hawks. They're like twelve and four. The Atlanta Hawks are what I thought they should have been at the beginning of the season when they made all those moves. I mean, when they got, you know, Bogdanovich and they got um, Gallinari and they got Rondo and Chris Dunn, like, I felt like I this is what they should be, fourth or fifth seed in the East with everything else they got. DeAndre Hunter, Cam Reddish, Trey Young, um, and uh, – my man, um, Clint Capella. I couldn't think of his name, Clint Capella. And Kevin Herter. I mean, they got they got a nice amount of good names in there. You know what I'm saying? Nice amount of good names. So they should I felt like they should have been easily in the playoffs this year. And they switched to coach and now it seems like Atlanta is what they should have been or what they were supposed to be, because they wasn't that before they switched to coach. And now they got Nate McMillan in there. I mean, they're like the fourth or fifth seed. Boston, on the other hand, they're plummeting. I mean, Boston has got two all-stars. Atlanta has zero, zero all-stars. Zero all-stars on a team this year. Even though Trey Young is probably an all-star. He should have been, you know, based on the numbers. They got zero all-stars this year. And... They're way better than the Boston Celtics right now. Boston is just plummeting. I don't know what to say. They got Evan Fournier. I would think that would help them out. That would move the needle back up. You know, you got – then we got the team, Raptors. They need to rebuild. Um, I don't know why they didn't move on from Kyle Lowry. I guess they're going to wait to the offseason because it's time to move off from all their old heads and just go with Siakam and um, Anobi and, and Fred Van Fleet. For the future, build around them. Um, Skip Bayless, four year, thirty two million. I mean, Skip Bayless invented debate, sports debate. He's the godfather of sports debate. But like, I don't know. Like, is Skip just because you're the godfather of something? Are you entitled to just say whatever you want to? Like, just any old nonsense. Like, Skip speaks just blatant nonsense on live television. I mean, just lies after lies after lies, blatant nonsense, bogus statement after bogus statement. I mean, it's just, it's just some of the things he says. I mean, anybody else would have been fired just speaking that unintelligently about basketball. I mean, he might be the godfather of sports debate, but he's not the godfather of speaking about basketball intelligently. I would say that's Stephen A. Smith. Um, LaMelo Ball out for the rest of the season. Oh, man. Hold on. Hold on. What was that coach that was talking about? Like, uh, Paul Silas. Or oh, Stephen Silas. I mean... I feel like he feels right now. You know, the Houston Rockets plummeting. Like, that's how I feel about Lamar Ball out. You know, that's how I feel. Let me get off it, though, because I'll stay depressed. I'll stay depressed. Lamar Ball's out. Because we were exciting. 
And then we we still might make the playoffs. We we still balling out. We still might make the playoffs. We still might come back. You know. Let me move on to Lonzo. Lonzo has been the Pelicans. I think made the right move on not moving off from Lonzo. I mean, literally won a game for him the other day with Zion out and um. Brandon Ingram out. So, you know, he that's good that he can actually win games without the top guys that in, you know, playing. And he's improving his shooting tremendously. He definitely can f- facilitate run the offense. He plays defense hard. He's long. I mean, I seen the other day he scored a basket. As soon as the dude got the ball, he was clamping him down. You know, like two feet from the basket. You know what I'm saying? As soon as dude got the ball, two feet from the basket, he's clamping them down already. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, they, they were smart by keeping Lonzo. Um, let's talk about uh, Andre Drummond and Ben McElmore to the Lakers. Uh, ben McElmore, he He's basically a filling guy for LeBron right now while LeBron's hurt. So um, that was an okay move because he ain't going to play playoff time, I don't think, at all. Like playoff time, he probably won't get no PT. Um, Drummond, we need another big man. Um, Gasol, all due respect to how good Gasol feels right now, he's not playing too well. And, you know, that's how it works in the work world. I mean, you can't do your job right. So we got to bring somebody in that can do a better job. You know, somebody who's more efficient at their job, you know, and that's the thing. It's all just not really, it's not providing enough for us, not for what we expected out of him. You know, but we're still going to need him playoff time. We're still going to need him, you know. So, yeah, and then you got um. Griffin and Aldridge to the Nets. Um, I think that was good timing for them because right now, like you got James Harden's about to be hurt, so they're gonna need as much as much as they can. You know, we don't know Kevin Durant. He's supposed to, he's supposed to be coming back like next game, but we'll see. We don't know if Kyrie will take another um, vacation. You know, James Harden's supposed to be out for like ten games, I think it is. Or no, they're gonna reevaluate him in ten games, so we'll see. You know, we'll see about that. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button in the right hand corner. Um, let's talk about Nuggets picked up. Uh, Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon to the Nuggets is looking very good right now. It's looking very good. I, I mean, I think they just need to. Uh, they need to unleash Michael Porter. They need to make Michael Porter like this second most taking the shots. Jamal Murray, third most. Aaron Gordon, whoever fourth in line and whatnot and, and so on, man. But um I like I like the move, man. Aaron Gordon seems to fit in very well with the Nuggets. I like what I see from the Nuggets chances. Um they could be in the Western Conference finals again this year. And they could actually get to the finals this year. Like they have all the pieces they need. All the pieces they need. You know, they got a, a championship veteran Big man um, on the bench, JaVale McGee, if they need some veteran experience to come in and back up Joker. Um, I mean, they still got Will Barton. They, yeah, they got they got enough. They got enough, you know. I'm still not convinced with the Jazz because I seen Zion Williamson bully Rudy Gobert one week, and I seen Embiid do it the next week. I'm not convinced. Um, the Nets, I'm not convinced the Nets come out if they don't, they're not playing together, like all the team healthy, like all the players. I'm not convinced. And the Sixers, I'm like, they didn't really make no major moves, but watch out. Watch out for the Sixers. I think this is between the Sixers and the Nets to come out the East. And also, J.J. Reddick, he basically came out and um, was up saying he got traded to Dallas, I guess, you know, which sucks for Dallas because, damn, you know, you don't want to play for us. And we got Luca over here. And, yeah, they said they were going to try to get him to 
a team closer to Brooklyn, but at the same time, a team closer to Brooklyn has to want him. And I didn't hear about any teams that wanted him that were closer to Brooklyn. So, and why would Brooklyn want him? They got Joe Harris. You know, you don't need, you don't need him. It's just, yeah, he's not, he's not really producing a lot this year. You know, so it is what it is. Um, once again, this is Triple P, Paul Pickett Podcast. Um, hit that subscribe button on that right hand corner on YouTube. Also, the audio version goes on Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Slacker, Tune, uh, tune In. You can Google Paul Pickett Podcast. You see the name in the background. Um, also, check out some of my websites, promopalace.biz, my promotional company. Check out uh, indiecastle.net. Check out planetplaylist.com. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at Paul P Podcast. Um, I don't got an Instagram for the podcast, but um, you can follow my Instagram at Promo Palace and Indie Castle Music. Um, Facebook, Paul Pickett Podcast, Promo Palace LLC. Also, check out the apparel, newlitter.com, New Litter Apparel. You stand up, let you see the shirts. It's New Litter. Uh, we got the masks. You know, do a little apparel. You know what I'm saying? That's how we do. I'm your host, Paul Pickett Podcast. I want to thank y'all for tuning in. Check me out every Wednesday on YouTube. And the audio version hit Spotify. I want to thank y'all. Peace. Hit that subscribe, follow, like, all that good stuff. And I'm out. Peace.